All right guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room and today's subject is gonna be around these beauties. That is the Westin Jerk Bite. And as you can see, we've got Baby Bear, we've got Mama Bear and we've got Daddy Bear. It comes in three different sizes, nine, 11 and 13.5 centimeter. The two smaller versions come in both shallow runner and medium runner and I'll take you through the lips in a second. And the larger version really getting into what I'd class as pike territory really. Uh, the 13.5 centimeter, that only comes in the shallow runner. But if you follow any of my content, I always say for pike fishing, you wanna be above the line of sight, so I don't mind fishing a shallower one. And typically, those pike are gonna be in the edges or around weeds, so I typically wanna try and keep it a little bit shallower as well. So that's absolutely perfect, only coming in the shallow runner. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to take you through a bit about the rod, the reel, the braid, the setup. Um, I'm then going to take you through a little bit about colour and I'll take you through a little bit about the, the right way to twitch them. Because this is key and I see people fishing these incorrectly all the time. All right, And there's a particular way, it's called the bounce. Um, I'll get into it later, so stay tuned, but it's very, very critical how you retrieve these types of baits. But first of all, let's get into it. This is the West End Finesse TNC, 7 to 21 gram. Um, I, I do occasionally fish the 5 to 15 with jerk baits, especially with the smaller one. But for the small one on a medium runner or the, or the, the regular one, the 11 centimeter one, typically always using this. Um, reason being, you'll probably notice as well, this is my first gen still. I can't let go of this rod. I've caught so many amazing fish on it and it is the best all-rounder for my reservoir fishing ever. I can fish crankbaits on it, I can fish jerkbaits on it, I can do a little bit of everything on this rod. Um, but the reason that I can do everything on it is because it's fast action. It's not ultra fast but it's not medium and you need a fast rod because when you're twitching the bait you don't want the rod absorbing too much of the energy in the in the twitch you want the rod to be nice and fast and nice and crisp so that when you twitch the bait that energy is transferring up the line to get the maximum amount of movement out of your bait all right so you want a fast action rod. I fish a 2,500 size reel. And again, you might want to consider, this is one of the few times that you might want to consider a high gear ratio. For most of my fishing, I really like regular, regular or, or even to a certain degree, slow sometimes. I'm often playing with smaller size reels to get a slower retrieval rate. But a lot of the time with my reservoir fishing, I fish a two and a half thousand size reel. But when you're fishing with jerk baits, occasionally you're gonna have quite a bit of slack in your line because you're twitch, twitch, you're working it, twitch, twitch, and then you wind up the slack. You're not using the reel to wind the bait in, all right? That's absolutely critical. They do not work their best like that. That's not to say you can't catch them on a straight retrieve. I know in the salmon fraternity, these types of lures are absolutely deadly. Fished in the flow, fished on a straight retrieve, these kind of minnow style baits. But yeah, it's just it's just not, not what they're designed for specifically. But however, there is everything from a continuum, from a straight wind, which will give it a slight little wobble coming through the water, all the way up to whacking it pretty hard. But we'll cover that in a second when I get onto uh, the retrieves. You'll notice on there as well, now this is pretty key. Most of you know I've got a clip, a light wire trace coming up and no swivel. The best thing about these jerk baits is the fact that they suspend. Now we put so much time and effort into making these baits the best they can possibly be. And twitch, twitch, moves the bait left and right, and then they sit there. Jorgen Larsen says, park it. All right, twitch and park. And that is the thing, especially in that cold water, that can be absolutely key to getting you bites. With your perch fishing in particular, don't be afraid to wait anything up to five, six, maybe even eight seconds before your next twitch. And know, have the confidence that that, 
bait is fishing the whole time through, even when it's just sat there. There might be an ever such a slight rise to the bait, ever such slight, or an ever such slight sink to the bait. If it's sinking quickly or rising quickly, that's not what you want. In the summertime, you can get away with a rising bait, a rising crankbait. In the winter time, when these come into their own, that cold water scenario, you want it to be basically suspending and not moving more than a few inches in that in that kind of you know five to eight second pause um, when you do get that that's what I was saying about high gear ratio reel twitch twitch and you leave a pause and there's a little bit of slack in that line quite a lot of the time you're going to hook into the next one on your next twitch all right and you might have the rod all the way over here so you haven't got enough room to strike so being able to crank down quite quickly to set the hook is really, really key as well. All right, so do consider a high gear ratio reel. But you know the rules on this channel. Anytime we've got a treble on, uh, so the nine centimeter comes with two trebles and the 11 and the 13 centimeter come with three trebles. All right, anytime you've got trebles on, Wire trace, wire trace, wire trace. You know the score. Um, yeah, now a lot of people say, can I swap them over to singles? Yes, if you want to. Uh, can I take off one of the trebles? A lot of people like taking off the middle treble. Yes, the only thing is they're designed with the weight of these trebles to sit in the water just right. So normally it's slightly nose down. The deeper the runner, typically, the more nose down it will sit, all right? But if you start taking off different sets of hooks, you might turn a suspender into a floater, uh, or you might change the balance on it from sitting just nose down into sitting nose up, which then, if you can see the angle of that, the next time you pull the bait, it's gonna come up and it's not gonna twitch properly. They're designed to be slightly nose down so that that lip gets the, catches the maximum amount of water and you get the maximum amount of movement, all right? Um, so if you do want to take one of the trebles off, you might have to consider rebalancing with a little bit of lead wire or, or something like that. There's a few on the market you can get, little sticky ones uh, to, to replace the, the weight of the treble. And you won't need much, but you know we love the details on this channel, so make sure you pay attention to how it sits in the water. So there we go, we've done rod. Real, right, we'll cover a little bit about color now. Now, clarity of water is absolutely unbelievably key with this. I would never fish a jerk bait in less than about 12 inches of visibility. Typically, I want 12 to 18 minimum. Just whenever you think jerk bait, think clear water bait, all right? It is a typically a clear water bait. Um, the reason being is because it jumps off the center line left and right. And the smaller the amount of visibility, so let's take it to the extreme to make the point. If we go down to a one or two inch visibility venue, all right, and we're fishing a bait, yes, they've got rattles in, so they'll be able to hear it. They're not, they don't pulse loads of vibrations little bit of vibration but not loads that's why they're typically a visual bait and you need clarity of water but imagine you've only got a couple of inches of visibility and i'm fishing a bait that is darting all over the place how are you expecting that fish to find that properly and then create a successful strike in those types of conditions, I want to be slowing down my bait, I want to be using bigger baits with more vibrations, and I want a predictable track. I want it to come in a certain line so that that fish can come up behind it, predict where it's going to be, and get a successful attack. That's what I want for my lure fishing. I can't expect him to have successful attacks in 2 inch visibility water if this is diving around 8, 10, 12 inches side to side. He's going to have, he's just going to swap type of tip, miss it quite a lot of the time, and then abort, all right? So that's typically why we don't use them in muddy water situations. They're a clear water bait, um, definitely. I can, however, why do we do one in a fire tiger then, I hear you say? Fire tiger, typically for muddy water situations. There is something about 
the flash, even in clear water, and I've said this about crankbaits as well, it's speed that triggers them. So in a jerkbait, it's not speed on the retrieve, it's speed in terms of ooh, ooh, jumping around. Always remember the cat and mouse analogy, all right? The mouse starts moving, the cat gets interested. You want to play with a ball of string with a kitten, you've got to tweak it about. The minute that you stop moving it, twitching it, he just loses interest, all right? That's what predators love. They love to, to take advantage. They love seeing things out the corner of their eye. So it's speed that triggers them, but not speed like a crankbait. It's speed twitch, twitch. And then we leave it parked. So don't worry too much. I wouldn't typically be fishing this with five to eight second pauses. But if the water was still warm, the visibility was only... 12 inches or so, I wouldn't mind fishing something like this. Twack, 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 bounce, bounce, bounce. I'd be fishing, tweak, tweak. I'd be fishing it quite on a, on a fairly high cadence, um, but they can be absolutely deadly in the bright colors, really winding those fish up as well. But have to say that probably eight or nine times out of 10, I do like something a little bit. You'll see a little bit of see-through, a little bit of green, a little bit of silver, something like that. Or, the, or these real roach ones, are super cool or something like uh, i think we call this one ayu floating western ayu all right again quite a see-through bait and really really cool but for those clear water situations um yeah so a little bit about about color um yeah clarity of water typically a clear water bait and the last one and this is the most important point to fishing a jerk bait so i'll take you through the continuum you can fish them on a straight retrieve, all right? Typically, it's not gonna be on the straight retrieve that you get hits, you'll get odd ones. It will be, however, slow straight retrieve and then the pause. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna get bites on jerk baits on the pause, all right? But that's, unless it's super frigid cold, uh, or it's just kind of a, how they want it on the day. That's not something I come across most of the time. Most of the time, you want to be fishing the bounce. Now, what is the bounce? The bounce is you start with your rod. You're going to have a little bit of slack in your line. All right, so actually, let's rewind. You cast out. You've got a shallow runner on or a medium runner on. It's going to take you a few winds to get it down to depth. All right. Um, these shallow runner ones are typically half a meter to about a meter and a half, about three to five foot. The deeper running ones are probably looking more at like five to about eight foot. All right. So it'll take me a little few winds just to get it down. Once I feel like it's down at depth, I then point the rod almost directly at the bait. I've got a little bit of slack in the line and I bring the rod down to the side and I bounce the bait, uh, bounce the rod, sorry, off the bait. So doing, think of twang. I know it sounds stupid, but this is the way I think about stuff, all right? You bounce the bait, and what that does is, if you, if you hit the bait and kept the rod there, you would then hit the bait, it would twitch slightly, and you would keep a tight line right up to the bait. That's not giving it any opportunity to glide, all right? And this is what makes them so important. You bounce the bait and the slack, so you're doing the sl you start with slack and you finish with a bit of slack and that allows the bait to twitch off to the side and then you give it some slack and it keeps going and pauses. And then you twitch it again and it comes back the other side and then stops. And you twitch it again and it comes back and stops. All right, you've always got to do that. We give it a little bit of room at the back end of that bounce, all right? That's absolutely key. I see so many people, they almost like, they twitch, 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 like three times in a row. All that does is that pulls it forward, pulls it forward, pulls it forward. These baits are best because they work off the center line and they will naturally, if you give them a little bit of room, they naturally come off to the side and glide. Twitch, bounce, doing, they'll come across nicely, all right? That is the best tip I can give you to get the bait best out of these baits. Um, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. Now, you can do small twitches when it's really cold, small twitches, long pauses, but I'm still trying to keep it crisp. Bounce, 
bounce. Might be a little one. An experiment always between one and three. I don't find any more than that helps. Um, occasionally, you might notice this on the Westin Swim video that I did, which is a glide bait in a different kind of uh, uh, realm. You can twitch those as well. Um, but what I tend to do is if sometimes if I get halfway through a cast and I haven't had a touch, I might do that stop where I go one, two, three, four, like really quick. And it basically gets the rattles going and fires out and it kind of causes a lot of commotion. Sometimes you get into that rhythm, you're casting it out and you do one twitch, one twitch, and it's all like a bit boring and a bit, bit sort of mundane sometimes. And sometimes you just got to fire them up a bit. One, two, three, four. And you can get the attention of a fish that might be half asleep and then carry on with your other jerks, all right? But once you've got his attention, he might be back online again, all right, into feeding. So, um, yeah, but typically, um, don't, be, don't be afraid to, to leave it five, six, or anywhere up to about eight seconds. Most of the time, you're gonna get bites on the paws, and like I said, you're gonna, you're gonna bounce, you're gonna go one, two, and then you're gonna go one, and then you leave for a minute, and then you go to bounce again, and you'll feel there's one on there. Ooh. And then, so a lot of the time they'll come up and they'll hit this bait and kind of sit in it with, with it in their mouths for a bit. So that's another good reason to have a fast action rod. You gotta set those hooks home. So um, yeah, when you bounce to go and feel it again, don't be afraid to strike and high gear ratio reel keeps you in contact when you've got a bit of slack on the line too. So there you go guys, a little bit about rod, reel, setup, wire, um, sizes, lip sizes, a little bit about colour, water clarity, and most importantly, it's about that twitch. It's the bounce, all about the bounce. So um, there you go guys, hope you enjoyed that one, learnt a few things or two. That's the West End Jerk Bite, an absolute cracker, and uh, everyone needs some sort of hard bait in your box. Now I'm gonna finish off by saying, I've had, we're getting into predator season and I get loads of people asking me questions about, oh, you see it on the forums all the time. Oh, if you could only ever have one bait forever, what would it be? And you'll notice in the comments, you'll notice virtually every single person puts in there a different style bait as to their favorite. That tells you two things. One, confidence in your bait is absolutely key. But number two, there is no magic lure. There are fantastic lures. But the main thing you should do is have variety in your box and know how to fish them. So instead of having 20 soft plastics, right? Everyone's got soft plastic itis these days um, and they, they often just fish soft plastics and that's it. Have five soft plastics, have a couple of jerk baits. Don't forget a spinner, have a crank bait. Have, just put some variety in your box between hard baits, metals, you know, soft plastics and learn to fish them because on any given day, one will always be better than the other. And if all you've got to change is a soft plastic for another soft plastic for another soft plastic, you're gonna miss out on a lot of good fishing, all right? So on their day, these will be the number one. Uh, there's a video online that I filmed with Jorgen Larsen last year, uh, Swedish archipelago. The water was two and a half degrees. It was absolutely freezing cold and guess what? This absolutely outfished everything else. It was the, well, not this one in particular, it was the 11 centimeter version, shallow runner. We were catching perch in about one meter of water and I had a very special 51 centimeter perch on the jerk bite. They do have a tendency for throwing a big one up as well. So there you go guys, enough of my waffling, but I hope you enjoyed another kit room and I'll see you on the next one.